students here is your third chapter in science by name metals and non metals so let us start this, this chapter before starting this chapter i need i uh, wish to recall some uh, concepts from ninth standard we have learned in ninth standard regarding various elements we have seen that elements can be classified as metals and non metals on the basis of their uh, properties appearing properties think of some Uh, uses of metals and non metals in your daily life in our daily life we come across many metals and non metal things many substances which are metals and which are non metals we come across many things in our daily life which are purely metal and which are purely and some are purely non metals and uh, we have to focus that what properties they expose what what properties they show they uh, and uh, as per the properties they are categorized as metals and non metals what properties do, did you did you think of why categorizing elements on that uh, as metals and non metals how are these properties related to the uses of these elements let us look some of the properties in details first we will focus on the physical properties of the metal physical properties of the metal Uh, the easiest way to start grouping the substances by is by comparing their physical properties physical properties means the uh, the met property of metal which we can see by our naked eyes which we can which we can sense which we can percept which we can feel let us study this with the help of following activities for preparing the activities 1 and 1 to 6 we have to collect the samples of following metals such as iron copper aluminum magnesium sodium lead and zinc and, and other metals that is easily available okay all the metals and all the non metals they are they compulsorily exhibit some physical and chemical properties compulsorily they exhibit that properties and actually many of the properties are such that we are aware with them we know the properties that's we need to recall because already in our daily life we are using that metals and non metal things so in our first activity to observe the physical property just take some uh, uh, some solid piece of iron some solid brick of iron and some solid brick of copper and some small solid brick of aluminum and uh, in last magnesium now take the appearance of each sample <coughs> note the appearance of each sample now take a sand sand paper sand paper which is available in um, mechanics in garage and in automobile shops take that sand paper just rub on the metal rub on the iron rub on the copper what you will be observing you will be observing that these metallic substances they exhibit some kind of shine why because metallic metallic substances have metallic luster property they have the property of shine their surface starts shine metal in their pure state have a shining surface this property is called metallic luster any metal which is purely metal such as iron such as copper such as aluminum such as magnesium if you take the sample of that metals in the hard in the hard form and you and you and if you rub the sand paper on that just rub for a while for minute or two, half an or two minutes then you will be observing that that metals will be exhibiting a shining property right this is first activity now second activity is they take some some small piece of iron small piece of copper small piece of aluminum small piece of magnesium try to cut these metals with a, with a sharp knife and note your observations hold a piece of sodium metal with a pair of tongs always handle sodium metal with care dry it with by pressing between the folds of a filter paper put it on a watch glass and try to cut it with a knife 
what do we what you will observe you will find that metals are generally hard the hardness varies from metal to metal that means metals are such substances to which you cannot break using the knife you cannot break you cannot make into pieces using just a knife or any other metallic uh, any uh, any other kind of knife so metal have generally hardness in them third activity is take pieces of iron zinc lead and copper place any one metal on a black block of iron and strike it four or five times with a hammer or do you observe strike with the hammer repeat with other metals record the changes in the shape of these metals first of all you take iron zinc lead and copper take the pieces of iron solid iron zinc obviously this will be solid only take the pieces of iron and the pieces of zinc pieces of lead and pieces of copper place any one metal on the block of iron in one hand take iron take and in other hand either you take zinc or you take lead or you take copper place it on the iron metal keep it on the iron metal and now strike hit four to five times by using a hammer what you will observe you will find you will find that some metals can be beaten into thin sheets this property is called malleability did you know that gold and silver are the most malleable metals in our houses women use jewelry what they are made up of they are made up of silver and gold why because these metals can be malleable easily malleable these metals can be easily converted into shape of a thin plate by hitting by hammer by striking by hammer on keeping uh, uh, on keep, keeping on the iron metal if you strike on that if you continuously start start hitting that metal that metal will uh, changes its shape and concludes its shape to shape as flat plate so some metals are by this activity we found we conclude that some metals exhibit the property of malleability m e M A L L E A B L malleable metals. The metals are malleable because they can easily change the shape by hitting with the hammer. Now, next activity is the ability of metals to be drawn into the thin wires is called ductility. In our houses, we have electric wires, we have electric connections. we have electric current current circuits connect networks in that wires in that wire the wire is made up of metal and it is in the form of a long wire how it will how it is uh, how come we can find the metal in the wire shape because of the property of ductility some metals can be converted into the shape of wires okay gold is the most ductile metal because gold we can convert gold metal into wires in easily we will be surpri surprised to know that a wire of about 2 km length can be drawn from 1 gram of gold only 1 gram of gold using only 1 gram of gold we can make we can prepare 2 km long wire by hitting by changing its shape so metal exhibit the property of ductility it is because of their malleability and ductility that metals can be given different shapes according to our needs can we name some metals that are used for making cooking vessels do we know do you know that why these metals are used for making vessels let us do the following activity to find the answer 